I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Julie Fong, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Oak Grove Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, you're a special education teacher at Elk Grove Elementary School. Correct. So tell me exactly what you do. I work with small groups of students all day long, um, mostly in reading, writing, and math. And the majority of my students have a specific learning disability. And what that means is they're really smart. They're brilliant kids, but their brain processes information in a way that it makes learning and school difficult for them. So it's my job to make sure that I am meeting all of their needs, teaching them in their areas of deficit, and providing them with the best instruction possible, and monitoring their progress. So the goal is to get them back into the classroom 100% and on grade level. So how many students do you teach at a time? Do you work with at a time in a learning center? Um, so my caseload is about 25 to 28, but my group size ranges from, if I'm lucky, one-on-one, -on -one, and up to about six students with myself as the teacher. So six to one would probably be the largest group size. Okay, so you have six students, all with learning challenges. Each individually has something different. And so you're doing this split brain thing where you're working with each child knowing what, what they need. Yes. Tell me how challenging that is. Um, very, very, but it's also exciting. It's, it's, uh, it's so neat to be able to really figure out this one learns best this way, this one needs this strategy to support, and then figuring out a way to provide direct instruction to all students but meet the needs of this one and that one and that one. Um, and over time you just, I'm a good multitasker, I get good at it and it's fun for me so I just know how I can support and sometimes the support is in place for one student and the other students don't necessarily need it but it's not hurting them. For example, if I have a student with visual processing um, difficulties and they have trouble copying from the board, they lose their place. Um, if I'm writing some notes on the board, I might alternate colors. Well, that helps them keep their place and be able to copy correctly. The other students don't need that, but it's not hurting them. So that's one way that you can just kind of integrate it. So you're meeting one need while you're meeting all the other needs and trying to keep that uh, all straight in your own brain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how important is it then, uh, you know, it's imp family engagement is extremely important. Um, generally in education anyway, but when you're dealing with students with special needs, kind of explain how that relationship is even more crucial. Oh, it's huge, and it is so huge. I realized this, my own son um, struggled in school, he had an IEP, and knowing what I know, um, it was still emotionally very difficult to be on the other side of the table as a parent. And so I always keep that in mind. So before I meet with families, or before we have our meetings, um, I always make a point to reach out to the family. I interview them and ask them questions like, what do you see as your child's strengths? What are your concerns? What are your hopes for the future? How can I best help your child? Um, just by listening to them and hearing those concerns, I'm able to come to the meeting and have some ideas and supports. And then we work really closely together as a team because that's how the child is going to best be successful. It takes a village, right? Um, so if there's any concerns or needs going on, I'm communicating with the parents, they're sharing with me. Um, sometimes what I do, it's as simple as um, I had a kindergarten student last year and I had him after his kindergarten day so his parents would pick him up in the office um, after we had our lessons. And I could, it was amazing, I could say to the parent each and every day, he learned this, we're still working on this, could you practice this tonight and I'll check it tomorrow. And just being able to have that fluid conversation, that student made so much progress. So family involvement is everything. Yeah, and if they don't get involved and they don't continue the learning at home or during the summer or whatever, you kind of get that, that slide mm -hmm. where they, where mm -hmm. they fall behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's still my job to teach them anyway and right. still try my best to get them the support as much as possible at home and try and I found that 90% of my families really want what's best for their child. Um, they just may not know how to do it, mm -hmm. um, or they might feel uncomfortable themselves, and that's okay. I'll take on the education part of it if you can help me with the social part of it, if you can help me with the behavior part of it or the emotional part of it. And I've, I rarely find families that are so disengaged that they won't do even that. So you have students with a wide variety of needs so how crucial is the professional learning that you have 
you know, when you're not on campus that really kind of gets you ready for what other challenges might come ahead? It's huge. It's everything. And it's forever changing. So you can't say, I've been teaching 20 years. I can't say I know it all. I still have things to learn. I still have new challenges. In my world, um, sometimes I get students with syndromes. And I've never heard of this syndrome. And what does that mean? So I have to go do my research and figure out what that child needs. So it is ongoing, never ending professional development. Mm, because like I say, something new comes up that no one's ever heard of or maybe you haven't heard of. Mm -hmm. So you have to find, and then again, that's one other special thing that you've got to apply in your classroom. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what made you decide to become a special education teacher? How did you get there? Um, I actually never wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> My mom was a teacher. True confessions she, right yes. now. You, yeah, okay. <laughs> My mom was a teacher. She's recently retired. And uh, I grew up in a small town. I had one school. It was kindergarten through eighth grade. And she was the strict teacher. And everybody knew my mom. And I just did not want to be a teacher. Um, but when I was in high school, I had a teacher who I think was trying to prompt some discussion. Um, but basically, she was saying, should we sacrifice an individual for the greater good. And it just got my, my passion going that no, we need to meet everybody's needs. We need to accept everybody regardless of their abilities. Um, still wasn't wanting to be a teacher. And then something happened. I went to college and I, I, I don't know, maybe it was you know God's will, I don't know. I decided I needed to do some community service, not for any reason other than for myself. I contacted a local elementary school and was helping in a fourth grade classroom. Um, and that teacher had me working with small groups of kids. And I found that I couldn't wait to get there on the days that I was to go. And after I left, I came back sharing stories about, oh my gosh, this student did this, this student, oh my gosh, you need to hear about this. And after some self-reflection, I realized that I wanted to be an ambassador. That probably wasn't what would make me happy in life, that I wanted to make a difference. And I loved working with kids, so teaching and then my passion for special education, I have a dual credential. So I student taught in gen ed and special ed and just really loved being able to get to know the intricacies of each student and being able to see the progress um, that special ed allows you to do because you're working with such small groups of students at a time. So just think, for that volunteer experience, you, you found your path. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And if you'd have volunteered somewhere else, who knows what you would be. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So how many years have you been a special education teacher? 20 years. 20 well, years I just finished my 20th year. Okay. Yeah. In that span of time, what kind of changes have you seen, uh, especially in, in like the types of students that you're working with? Um, as far as students, um, when I first started working, I found a lot, I had a lot of students that most people would think of like had dyslexia. They struggled to learn to read, but otherwise math was intact. They, they could communicate well in the classroom. They participated, um, and that was just kind of it. They needed to learn to read. Over time, I'm finding many, many more students that have language impairments, mm -hmm. and we can all make guesses as to why that is, whether it's the technology that's out there, but they're not able to even like repeat sentences, carry on a good uh, conversation, and you can imagine how that impacts their ability to read and write. Um, so just the change in students that way. I've worked at low income and high SES schools and I find that in general kids are the same across the board. Mm -hmm. They have the same needs, but that transition over time I've noticed um, as far as my job, um, we have to create individual education plans for students. When I first started teaching, they were two pages. <laughs> they are now up to 30 pages probably. Mm -hmm. um, so just, and some of it is good because we needed to get more specific and more in depth about how we're supporting students, but that change has definitely come about. <laughs> so what does it mean to you to be named a Teacher of the Year for your district? <sighs> um, I don't do this job for the honor and the rewards, but, and you know, you sometimes you're always questioning, am I good enough, am I good enough? So the validation that yes, yes, you are effective, you are good, um, is amazing. Um, I think it's also great that I have the ability to have a little bit of a platform and share um, some of the things that I've come to learn over time and the importance of especially literacy and how to teach reading. Mm. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thanks for spending some time with us. We've been talking with 
Julie Fong, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Yoke Grove Unified School District. Thanks for being here. Thank you.